Hey guys, Underground Geek here. So at this point, it's it's not even fair the butt kicking that DC is given to uh, Marvel right now. I mean, it's like DC is Chris Jericho and Marvel is on their list. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, and they're and it's like they're not even intentionally doing it. It's kind of like. They just keep showing up and owning the little guy, and then they're just like, sorry, sorry, I'm awesome. I, I can't help it. It's not my fault. Um, so now they've, they've started this uh, Gotham Resistance, which ties into um, DC Dark Knight's Metal. And so all they're doing all these comic books, but you see they're not going to do like 30 like Marvel did. They're probably going to do, do like 10 different tie-ins, you know, and then... Do those over the course of a couple of weeks, so you know that'll all make sense. But so we got this cover here, and I'm trying to think of who this guy is. Let's see if I can flip down through here and, and see the uh, the artist. But I'm trying to remember. I like him. I think I follow him. Yes, yeah. Sajepin Sejic. I really like his style of art because he draws. He's really good at drawing women. And he's really good at drawing facial expressions on people. Now, in this comic, it's done a little bit differently than the way he normally does it. But the covers are done that way. So he may have just done the covers. But uh, it's seen, I, I really like them. You should check the two covers out. They got the one with the big Minotaur robot uh, with Starfire and Robin on there. It looks awesome. And then they also got uh, the cover with all the group on the cover, and they're kind of standing, very 90s style, standing, looking up at the camera. And uh, it's just, it's crazy what he can do with, with obviously, computer and, and just, like, painting it on there. I mean, it's, you, everything has tone, everything has depth, and he, he's great at doing facial expressions, too, and people in motion. He's good at that, too. But anyway, enough bragging on him. Um so anyway, this is a tie-in for Dark Knight's Metal 2 that just started, that just came out this week. And right off the bat, we get the creepy freaking ghoul Robins again. And uh, Riddler's sitting there in his cell, and he just starts hearing, Oh my God, what is that outside? Ah, ah, and he starts hearing that crow, 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 from the crazy little ghoul goblin uh, Robins. And then, bam, a big crash through the, door, through the wall, and then we see... Uh, the Joker bat stand there, and, and this is an epic what he says right here. He says, you're thinking that this is impossible. You see my height, my build, you hear my voice, and you know who I am. You know I'm Batman, but you also know that I'm not. You know that I am something twisted and wrong, and that terrifies you. I mean, is that not creepy? I mean, ugh. But anyway... So then he says, but you shouldn't be afraid, Edward. You should be excited. I didn't come all this way to flay you like I did on my world. I came to deal you in. Whoa. So obviously he he was pretty uh, murderous on his world. He killed the Riddler dead. He says, no, no, no. You're not thinking about this. You're thinking about this all wrong. You get to decide that for yourself against what kind of game this is. And then we get this next spread uh, splash page. It's pretty awesome. It shows all the different uh, realities that these uh, villains can create. And I think that one one villain on the top right is Firefly, if I'm not mistaken. So these are very interesting characters. You get Bane, you get Mad Hatter, you get Poison Ivy, Mr. Freeze, and Firefly. And they all get kind of their own reality. And they're pretty intense. If you notice, they're like murdering people. And uh, he says, you know, just make me laugh with your own realities. And then they build these big rings about, around Gotham. And pretty much what it is is they're trying to keep the superheroes from getting to them. And so the Teen Titans show up. And Robin is, you know, he's obviously going after his dad. He doesn't know what happened to Batman. And he's trying to save him. But at the same time, he's trying to justify it by talking about this as a mission. And really, there is some truth to it. Like the Teen Titans really need to go save people. They don't know what happened to the Justice League. So they're kind of just taking action and, and going in there. But Batman style, Robin is going there head first, you know. And it's probably not the best idea, but they're backing him because they're all family. So anyway, they, they go to the city. They start saving people. And it's funny because Beast has time to take a selfie. 
And uh, see, that's a, that's what kills me about this. You know, um, Beast is Beast Boy is kind of like uh, what Marvel wants to do with the whole uh, pop culture type deal. You know. He likes taking selfies. He's very so social media oriented. He's very pop culture, but he does it in a way that's actually funny. And Marvel can't seem to do that organically. Like they have to throw stuff in there and then call it funny. And you're kind of like, no, that, actually, that's not funny. But anyway, moving on. I love Robin's little sidekick, Goliath. I would really hate if something ever happened to him. I'm glad he didn't die in Batman Beyond. Um, and I like all the other characters. They seem to have very unique abilities. He has a sidekick, which makes him even more uh, interesting with a huge bat creature. And so they enter they enter into the first ring, and it has the green Riddler symbols on the door. Obviously, you know what you're getting into. So they walk into it, and it looks like something out of one of those weird paintings. I mean, the, the stairs are going weird directions. Up is down, down is up, left is right. Something crazy has happened. So as they start through there, he's talking, and the Riddler starts talking to him and kind of agging him on. And you know you know how uh, Damien is. Uh, he cannot stand for somebody to make fun of him. So obviously he's already getting mad. He's getting frustrated. And he tells him to fight him and opens up the door and actually gets splashed with what looks like blood all through the room to, to knock him down. But he's able to catch a hold of a rope and, and stop himself. Well... When he does that, he realizes that that's actually the Green Arrow. And I was like, okay, cool, the Green Arrow showed up. And uh, so they actually go on an adventure trying to find out, you know, what's really happened to Batman. And as they're talking, you can kind of see that uh, both of them are very intelligent and they're starting to butt heads because they're both, uh, they're both hot-headed and they both like to lead. But uh, Green Arrow is slightly uh, more submissive about it than... Damien is just because he wants him to kind of realize, hey, you can't do this all on your own. You're going to need some help. But anyway, they get to their second challenge, and this is creepy as crap. They, they come upon a, a Batman, and, and Batman tells them that he is death. You failed me, Robin. And then they see that it's actually like a dead zombie Batman, and his guts are hanging out and everything. I was like, wow, that's creepy as crap. So they said the Riddler has created some sort of nightmares based on uh, the ones we've lost. And then they had someone say to the side, hey, you having some trouble with this maze, boys? And I was like, hmm, I don't wonder who that is. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes Croc and Harley Quinn. And Croc, like, bites the guts out of the zombie bat. And then Harley Quinn smashes his brains in. And she says, well, that was strangely satisfying. And I was like, oh, crap. They got the chance to kill Batman without killing Batman. But anyway, I love the way they're drawn. Um, uh, the, the emotions are shown very well in their faces, even even Croc is. And uh, they, he's sitting there with Batman's hand hanging out of his mouth. I mean, why can't Marvel do fun things like this? That's just, it's fun without being cheesy. And I mean, he he's almost seems like her guard dog or something. But anyway, so she's talking to him and... Uh, they're deciding on what to do next, and as they're traveling down through the, the maze, they come upon the final challenge, which is a gigantic robot minotaur megazord with uh, the Riddler inside the head. And the Riddler has obviously been changed. He looks different by his face, so he's been gassed up by that uh, card that the evil Batman gave him. He's been supercharged, in other words. And the machine looks like it's powered by his blood. I never noticed that before. It's hooked up to his body. It's like siphoning his energy out. It's crazy. Anyway, they start attacking the Minotaur. And Minotaur is trying to come down with a giant axe. Uh, there's a quip here, a quip there, a quip everywhere as they're fighting. And uh, we'll get to this cool scene here where, where Croc's like standing on top of him, slashing him. Arrow's jumping through the air and Quinn's diving out of the way. And uh, Robin is talking to the Minotaur and he's trying to finish a riddle. Like the Minotaur's giving him a riddle to uh, solve the maze and so he's having to fight at the same time he's thinking because he's like oh i'm the smartest i'm the smartest and they're like well prove it then so as they're as they're bashing and smashing he finally figures out what the answer is just in time to smash through the glass and knock the riddler out and it like you know destroys the machine and everything and takes away his power and he says where's my father what have you done to him 
And he says, you idiots, you can't imagine what's coming. You're already dead. I was like, oh, dang. And then we cut to this next scene where uh, Joker Bad is standing over the cliff watching the lightnings in the, in the sky. It's a very cool scene. The ghoul bats are surrounding him like little dogs. And uh, he says, come now, step out of the shadows. Can you smell that blood on the, on the wind? Are you ready, my devoted son? He says, yes, father. And that's obviously the ghoul Damian Wayne looking very creepy indeed. That's just crazy looking. Uh, but then we finish with them going to the next ring, which is obviously by the snow, Mr. Freeze. And someone says, uh, Robin, Robin. He says, Father. He goes, not your father. He says, your brother. Not Wayne. Run. And so he's running from the giant uh, frozen golem. Uh, from that movie, I guess, because that's what he looks like to me. And so that's where it ends. And we get kind of a cliffhanger for the next issue, which is Winter is Here, Mr. Freeze is Unleashed as the story continues, and Nightwing number 29. So obviously we've got to read, read Nightwing next. Um, but is this not cool? I mean, this is they're, they're doing a great job with the story so far. I read the whole thing. And what's funny is when I read this issue and I was going to do a video on Dark Knight's Metal 2, I started rereading again for the video, and I was like, wait a second. What happened to Harley Quinn and all them fighting? I thought they were fighting. And then I realized, oh, yeah, that was Teen Titans. Because they do so well with meshing the story and just going right into it, you don't feel like you've missed anything. You know what I mean? Uh, and I like that. Like, let's have one cohesive story told over a couple of different issues, okay? Let's not have it where you're, like, reading a comic and then you read the tie-in and you feel like you've missed months. You know what I mean? But anyway... I thought this was really good. I give the art like an 8 out of 10. I give the story an 8.5 out of 10. And I can't wait till the next uh, issue. The only uh, problems I have with it is I don't really like the way uh, Robin was drawn. But other than that, it's pretty good. Um, I love the evil Batman so far. This is this is very original without being original. You know what I mean? Like you were saying, oh, we got an evil Batman. How many times has that been done? Had they ever been nightmare versions of Batman before? Because this is creepy. And I've read where he was a vampire before. And this is creepier to me than when he was a vampire. But anyway, tell me guys what you think about this. Tell me if you've already read it. And, and uh, what you uh, think about the comic. And hit the like button. Hit the thumb, thumbs up notifications button. And uh, you know, just have a good day guys. I really enjoy this story. And I hope that you enjoyed it too. And I'll talk to you later. Out.